Hi, my name is Anu Patel. I'm a pediatric epilepsy specialist at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio. I've also been fortunate to be involved with a lot of the ongoing and previously completed trials on cannabidiol, or the purified cannabidiol epidiolex. I'm here to talk to you today about a summary of what's been going on in that research space, but also a little comparison on what we've seen in other products being sold uh, on the internet or in various forms, and then also what the future entails for cannabidiol as a possible treatment for both pediatric and adult epilepsy. First, I wanted to summarize the trials that we've seen being published in various literature thus far. Many of the trials that have completed are one and published were one the what we call open access trial, where we looked back at the people who had taken purified cannabidiol or epidiolex and reviewed how well they did and how safe the medication was for them. And what we found was very similar to what we found in the other trials, which I'm going to describe and then overall summarize the findings because they're very similar across all platforms. So in the other trials, which this open access, expanded access program led to, were trials in Lennox-Gastaut syndrome and Dravet syndrome, two very difficult to control epilepsy syndromes. And in these syndromes, what these trials were organized as were what we call randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials. These are what we would consider to be the gold standard in our field of pediatric epilepsy and adult epilepsy, and also which are the way that all other medical trials for medications have been done previously that ultimately left to an FDA approval. The goal of the company who makes this purified CBD, which is Greenwich Pharmaceutical, or Greenwich Biosciences, I'm sorry, um, their goal is to get this FDA approved. And what we've realized is that's not an easy thing to do, and it takes a lot of time, energy, and investment. And these two trials are their first attempt. And what happens in these trials is or what happened in these trials is that patients for a short period of time either got the medicine, purified cannabidiol or epidiolex, which is a plant-grade uh, based purified version in, of cannabidiol versus placebo. So something that looked a lot like it, but didn't have any of the CBD in that formulation. And what you saw across both, and both studies were designed that way, those that were for Dravet syndrome and then two for Linus Gisto syndrome. In the Dravet trials, it was just for kids 2 to 18. In Lennox Castell, it was 2 up to age 55, so adults were included in this data. And overall, what you found, which was also very similar to what was seen in the expanded access program, is about 40 to 45 percent reduction of seizures from when patients started. And this is an overall calculation we call a median seizure reduction. The reason why that was picked as the endpoint was because that is what's used for FDA approval purposes. In Europe, they use what we call the responder rate. So the percent of patients who had at least 50% of reduction of their seizures from baseline. And in all the trials, that was also seen. The endpoints were also seen. So hopefully that will lead to both the United States FDA approval and European approval as well. So what does this mean? Where do we go? What happens next? Well, the company will need to submit what's called a new drug application, or NDA. And that is an application to get FDA approval. Once they have FDA approval, if the data is deemed to be uh, adequate, sufficient, e effective, and safe, then it will lead to approval for the United States and hopefully in Europe as well. And what then that will entail would be a rescheduling. As you're aware, Cannabidiol is currently listed as scheduled one, which means that there's no medical purposes for that compound and it has potential addictive properties. Well, neither would, would be found if there's an FDA approval because there's been obviously medical approval and the FDA would likely not um, uh, approve it for the addictive purposes, although that could affect where the scheduling was seen. So then it would lead to the rescheduling by the Drug Enforcement Agency or DEA. Once that occurs, then the medication could be available for use 
via a prescription. And what's important about that is the prescription would not need a special license, would not need special restrictions from your provider, can be used for the disease states in Lennox Gisto and Dravet syndrome or patients with really hard to treat epilepsy, like I mentioned. What was also interesting and what the FDA will look at is the safety side of it. It's obviously very important to consider that when you do any trial. And what you saw in these trials is that it's really well tolerated. Not very many people stop using the medication. There are possible drug-drug interactions with a metabolite or what we call a breakdown product of Anfi or Clobazam, and so that needs further investigation. Potentially that's true with some patients who take valproic acid or Depakote, because a broken down portion of that medicine or metabolite, as we like to say in medicine, can have problems causing elevated liver enzymes. But again, the jury's still out and that's still not fully fully decided or fully known. But overall, it was the medicine was well tolerated, with the most common side effects being of uh, diarrhea, uh, GI upset, and sedation. So how does this compare to what's currently being available on the market? Well, what's important to know what's on the market is none of those products have been tested to the rigor or to the uh, level that this purified version of cannabidiol has been tested. This is a pharmaceutical grade version, which is still plant-based, but it's still going through the rigor of a pharmaceutical sponsored or clinical trial, where the other products that are available via the internet or in other uh, dispensaries or other places have not gone through that rigor and may not have the qualities or the purific purified CBD that it A claims to be or as it compares to Epidiolex. So it's a hopeful time for those who have hard to treat epilepsy, specifically with Dravet and for Lennox Gesto. And we're hopeful that this process will continue and we'll see how and when, which will happen hopefully shortly, the NDA submission will occur. And we'll go from there and see where uh, FDA approval could happen. And if so, what possible uses it could have for our patients with Lennox Gesto syndrome and Dravet syndrome, but more importantly, be an available treatment for all who have epilepsy in these disease states. So we'll see. I'll keep you updated and focused on what is occurring in the literature and in the, in the media. Please uh, return back to epilepsy.com and this page, and we'll update the content as needed. Thank you for your time. Enjoy.